Good day, grade 11 students. Again, I am Michelle de Rosario, your instructor for oral communication in context. Okay, so last week, we discussed lesson 1 and lesson 2, which is about the fundamentals of communication. So for today's lesson, I prepared a short video and I want you to watch it before we proceed to our lesson that we are going to discuss for today. Intercultural awareness may sound more complicated than it actually is. Let's follow Tim and have a look at what it means. If you went backpacking around the world, you would find that people behave in very different ways. Let's take a simple thing like greeting somebody. In different cultures, it can look like this. Like this. Or even this. Now, the beautiful thing about our international Testo community is you get to meet people from all over the world. It also means that you have to team up with them for global success in order to avoid misunderstandings and to work together effectively. That can be tricky because different cultures have different perspectives on things. When it comes to time, for example, or to personal space, Sometimes intercultural communication can be confusing. And even simple things like dining habits may need getting used to. So how do we gain intercultural awareness? By exchanging our different points of view and working on it together as one big community. And these 10 bullet points will help us in intercultural situations. Be open to new encounters and curious for new experiences. Don't be afraid. Be vigilant and observe so you won't make a faux pas. And of course, respect foreign customs, rituals and culture. Be patient and in case somebody does not behave how you expect, don't take it personally. Be kind-hearted. Share your own customs and culture with others. And finally, share your intercultural experience with colleagues and friends. That's the way to cultivate intercultural awareness at Testo. Okay, so that's it. That's the video that I prepared for you to introduce our topic for today, which is the intercultural communication. So as you can see, intercultural communication happens when individuals interact, negotiate, and create meanings while bringing in their varied cultural backgrounds according to Ting Tommy 1999. Okay, it pertains to communication among people from different nationalities, okay, according to Goodicons 2003. And communication that is influenced by different ethnicities, religions, and sexual orientations. So, when we say intercultural communication, it is interaction between uh, different what? Different cultures, different nationalities, uh, different ethnicities, different religions, okay, different beliefs, and of course, different sexual orientation so that's what we mean by intercultural communication okay so intercultural communication is sending and receiving of messages across languages and culture okay so we have the developmental model of intercultural sensitivity so actually we have what we have six stages for that okay so the stage one is about denial okay so it is the stage where the individual does not recognize cultural differences or by the word itself denial we are denying cultural differences or an individual in the denial stage might be heard saying example all cities are the same 
they all have tall buildings, fast food chains, and coffee shops. So just like that, just like in the definition or the by the word itself, denia, we are denying differences or the differences between culture. We don't want to focus the differences, okay? We are just denying. We are saying that there is no difference, but actually there is, okay? So that is the stage one. So the stage two is what we call defense, okay? So when we say defense, the individual in the defense stage might be heard saying, example, this culture does view life the way we do. Our culture is certainly better. Or second example, their ways are better than my own. I were one of them. Okay, so in this stage, we are what? We are defending that our culture, our view of life is much better than other culture, is better than other beliefs, just like that. Okay, so here in uh, stage 2 or in defense stage, individuals are just saying that uh, our beliefs, our view of lives, our ways, our language is better than others. Okay, so that's it. Next, for stage 3, we have minimization. Okay, so although individuals see cultural differences, they back more on the universality of ideas rather than on cultural differences. Okay, so here in this page, we might heard individuals saying, example, once we see through the cultural differences, we really are just the same. Okay, so in this stage, for the third stage, or what we call minimization, we are not looking for di differences of each cultures. We are just focused on the similarities rather than differences. Okay, so that's uh, what we mean by minimization or for the third stage. Next, for the fourth stage, okay, we have what we call acceptance so the individuals begins to appreciate important culture differences in behaviors and eventually in values okay so an individual in the acceptance stage might be heard saying these people and i have different values and experiences and i think we can learn from one another Okay, so in this stage, we want, we accept that we have differences and we can learn from those differences. That's why it is called acceptance. Accepting the differences and learn how to learn from it. Okay, next, for the fifth stage, we have adaptation. Okay, the individual is very open to world. The individual is very open to worldviews when accepting news perspectives. So the individual in the adaptation stage might be heard saying, To address our issue, I have to adjust my approach to consider both my own and my counterpart's background. Okay, so here in this stage, we are open-minded. Okay, so we are accepting what? We are accepting the fact that we have differences and we are trying to adapt, okay? We are trying to what? Just like in this example, we put some adjustments, okay? We put some adjustments to consider my idea and your idea, to consider my own belief and your belief to come up with one, okay? So that's what we call adaptation. We are we adapt differences from one another, okay? So next, on the last stage, okay, which is the stage six, or what we call integration, individuals start to go beyond their own cultures and see themselves and their actions 
base or multifarious cultural viewpoints. Okay. So an individual in the integration stage might be heard saying, I can look at the things from the perspective of the various cultures. Okay, so here in the stage six, you already uh, accept the differences. You already adopt. Okay, on the differences, you can already adjust. And now here in the integration stage, you want you already see okay life or you already have the mindset that you already accept everything you already accept the fact that we have differences now you can what you can easily look at the things okay from different perspective from different beliefs from different um, culture okay so here in the stage six you already accept the fact that um, others beliefs others ideas okay others point of view really matters okay so that is the six stages of the developmental model of intercultural sensitivity okay so let's proceed to characteristics of competent intercultural communicators so what are the characteristics of a good or competent intercultural communicators? So here are some of those given by the World Bank 2010. Okay. They identify the different or the following traits that define a competent intercultural communicator. So number one, flexibility and the ability to tolerate high levels of uncertainty okay uh, of course uh, for you to consider yourself as competent or an effective intercultural communicator you have to be flexible enough okay to interact with others okay having others beliefs having different beliefs okay the second one reflectiveness and mindfulness okay so of course you have to for example um, this is her or his belief on that particular um, thing okay so you have to reflect on that you have to accept that belief even though you are not uh, really agree with that idea okay so you have to be more reflective and mindfulness so next for the third one you have to be open-minded you have to have open mind okay of course to accept ideas of course to accept others beliefs okay and number four sensitivity of course you have to be sensitive okay on others opinion on others emotion okay next number five adaptability okay just like what we have said earlier you have to be ready okay to adopt others beliefs others opinion others ideas okay next number six ability to engage in divergent thinking and thinking how each one in a system influences each other Okay, so you need to have the ability to think in different ways, okay, in different perspectives. Just like what we have said, okay, you need to be flexible, of course, okay, you have to be sensitive, you have to engage yourself in what? In uh, thinking, okay, in different perspectives, not just in this way, okay, you have to put yourself in other shoes, just like that okay and for the last one you have of course you have to be polite okay so it is very important that you have to be polite to other people you have to speak politely you have to share your own ideas politely okay so for you to be uh, so called effective intercultural communicator you need to have those characteristics 
okay so we have tips okay so we have tips from refraining from being biased okay of course we cannot uh, actually avoid being biased since we are talking about intercultural communication or the differences of each other so of course we have some tips okay to refrain or somehow to avoid being biased with that so number one avoid stereotypes okay so example generalization about a certain group you have to avoid saying that this particular group or this particular culture is somehow the same in this particular group or culture so don't say that you have to uh, avoid generalizing certain groups okay you have to avoid stereotypes and next number two challenge gender norms when we say gender norms it those are social norms that is acceptable in the society okay so for example we are always saying that uh, this particular work is just for the boys girls cannot do that no okay so you have to accept the ideas that uh, even girls can do some works that we think only boys can do that okay so we have to challenge gender norms we have to challenge uh, ourselves for example i am a woman and we think that ah i can do this because i am a girl i am a woman so we have to challenge that even though i am a woman okay i can also do this so just like that and next number three do not talk down on younger people and the elderly okay so if you have to consider uh, who what age you are talking to okay for example you are talking to an elderly of course you have to consider uh, the way they think the way they speak okay how sensitive they are okay and you have to be sensitive to the religious practices of others for example uh, in this religion they didn't cut their hair okay because uh, this is not allowed in uh, their religion then respect it you have to respect other uh, other religions practices okay and for the last one and the very important tip okay is you have to be polite at all times okay just like what i am saying i am always saying that you have to be polite to everyone okay do not belittle people you perceive to be on a lower social class than you okay even though that particular person is only um, a jeepney driver a tricycle driver even though that person didn't finish college even though that person is just a garbage collector okay you don't have to belittle that particular person you have to respect them of course you have to be polite okay no matter how big or small that person is no matter how dark or how light her or his skin is no matter how young or how old he is or she is no matter how poor or how rich he or she is you have to respect that person you have to be polite to everyone okay so that is the very important tip for you to be an effective intercultural communication because when we say intercultural we just not focusing on different nations of course it is also about different genders different beliefs different social classes okay so that's how intercultural communication flows okay 
that's the end of our slide to sum up the discussion that we have for today so, an effective intercultural communication is very hard to do okay? because you have many things to consider but always remember all those tips of course and all those characteristics for you to be an effective intercultural communicator okay if you have questions and clarifications regarding to the lesson that we discussed for today, you can send it to me through our group chat. Okay, so that's all for today and have a great day, grade 11 students. Goodbye!